My name is Jeff Chiba Stearns, and I'm an animator. So the idea of the visual note taking is the idea that you're, you're actually creating a visual note. So you are connecting that right brain, left brain. You're hearing the information and you're also seeing it visually. The great thing about visual note taking is that you're revealing um, what's being said, right? And I think everyone likes the, the surprise, the element of surprise to sort of see what's going to be revealed next. Sometimes we'll pan out and you'll see the giant sort of image um, that was created, or we'll just create animation that will flow from one drawing to the next drawing to the next. So I think the whole reason why this visual note-taking style of sort of animating on a whiteboard or on a chalkboard or even through cutouts that move um, is really appealing to companies because essentially, you know, they have this information that they want to convey about their product, about themselves, that normally, um, you know, can't really be done if someone's just standing there as a talking head and, and telling you um, because it's not really engaging. Right? This is why a lot of lectures get transformed into a visual note-taking video because it's a great way to convey something to a mass audience in an entertaining way. You want to be able to see something. Someone can lecture to you for an hour and you'll tune out after a minute. Visual note-taking has the potential to go viral because it's really just sticky edutainment. It uh, encompasses all three forms of learning, which is auditory, visual, and written. And that's a very powerful tool for clients who want to engage uh, their audience. I think uh, one of the misconceptions of whiteboard animation is that people think, oh, I just whip it up, it's easy, it's done. Um, you know, there it is, it, it, it's, it takes a day. You know, there's still an element of animation to it. And if you want to make it really cool and go viral, there has to be an added element. So it's not just the idea of drawing an image and just creating a doodle, it's the idea of actually having that doodle animate a little bit. And that can be sort of just a small amount of animation or that can be quite large. And so that takes time. Uh, the other idea, or the other sort of, you know, the complex situation with whiteboard animation is it's quite physical for the animator. You know, I'm constantly bending down, drawing, getting out of the scene, drawing, getting out of the scene, drawing, and that potentially is quite physically taxing on me. Um, so it's tough to do that for, you know, 14 hours uh, a day. Because um, most of the times I'm on my knees or I'm having to duck out, and so it's, it's really labor intensive on the back and on the knees. But, um, like I said, like most animation, the reward is seeing it played back and seeing it match to the voiceover because that's really, for an animator, the most rewarding part about any animation is to actually see it come to life. Normally when, when I create these whiteboard videos, you want to have a nice stretch of time to work over because, you know, you want to make sure that you're in this sort of mindset, this zone. I usually call it animation meditation, right? Going into a meditative state to create these drawings and understanding that there is a zen-like quality to drawing the same thing over and over again or creating small movements over and over and over again and so it becomes a very meditative process. What I like to do is is to add like a little bit of you know my style into it so the idea is that I normally work in my style of animation in terms of the character design and that for me helps sort of the speed that I'm able to draw at. Yeah there's this idea of, of creating this human interest in the animation because they can see that there's time and effort put into creating it. And anytime they can see the hand of the artist, it's really important because they know there is a human, they can attach themselves to the idea that there's a human presenting this information to them. And that is something that I think goes back to elementary school, right? Having a teacher standing there talking to you and, and that human interaction all the way up through university, all the way up, you know, through the workplace, right? And I think when you see that element of someone describing something and drawing it, you know, it just automatically takes us back to this idea that we're listening and we're learning. And I think that's the power of, you know, visual note-taking.